What's going on everybody, C4 here, and today, with the Combine shortly approaching, everyone wants to know, should I watch the Combine? It's super long, there's a lot of, yeah, 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 lots of guys you don't even care about. What I'm going to try to do for you today is give you the top 10 players that aren't necessarily on all the first round mock drafts. I mean, if you're really invested in the offseason, you probably know most of the first round prospects, a couple guys maybe in the second round, but outside of that, when you, there's only so many guys, half the guys that usually go in the first round they always seem to skip the combine they wait for their pro day so what i'm going to try to give you today is 10 players that could severely boost their stock by having a very very strong combine that you need to watch you should try to go out of your way to you know find out when they are doing their testing and to clue in just see what happens maybe they're a need for your team and you want to get the extra edge when you're talking to your buddy so that is what i'm going to try to do here today um for the 10, it's just an alphabetical order. I was looking at the list, and I was still... I, I probably could have made 15 if I really wanted to, but, I, you know, I try my best to narrow it down to 10 prospects. So, first one up is Jair Alexander, the corner from Louisville, 5'11", 195 pounds. Uh, basically, he only played half the season this year in 2017, but in 2016, he had 40 tackles, 5 interceptions, and 9 pass deflections, and legitimately was considered one of the top corners in college. But then, obviously, with the injury in 17, a lot of people are kind of just, you know, glazing over him. Like, oh, yeah, he's a guy. You know, I, I want to talk about Josh Jackson, or I want to talk about Denzel Ward or Isaiah Oliver. But a guy like Jair Alexander, his tape doesn't lie. When he is healthy, he was utterly dominant, and it was a big reason why... The, the Louisville team looked a lot different this year than it did last year. Last year, they looked like they might be national contenders. This year, it just looked like Lamar Jackson had to do everything himself. And when you're missing pretty much the equivalent of Lamar Jackson on the defensive side of the ball, your team is going to struggle. So I think with if he tests particularly well, especially at 5'11", like you're going to want to see him jump really well because he's not as rangy as some of the 6'1", 6'2", corners that you're going to see. And he definitely on tape looks like a corner that's quicker than fast. And that is something that's you know a little bit alarming because 40 time is pretty much massive for the skill position players. You want to draft players that have, you know, the running backs, the wide receivers, the corners in particular, that have blazing 40 times. And I guess, you know, with the success of Evan Ingram, maybe the tight ends as well. So I think Jair Alexander is definitely one of the guys you need to look out at in the defensive back group. Go to number nine. It is going to be Taven Bryan, the defensive tackle from Florida. Six foot five, 295 pounds, converted offensive lineman, and he was utterly down. His stats, not nothing eye-popping. He had 37 tackles, six tackles for loss, and, and four sacks. But this was a down year for my Florida Gators, and if you looked at that defense that does have still a lot of talent, you know, Duke Dawson, we have a bunch of freshmen playing like David Reese and, and Marco Wilson and C.J. Henderson and stuff like that. But when you, if I had to tell me right now, what was the one player on offense and or defense that stood up for the Florida Gators this year? It was Taven Bryan. And people, scouts, everyone in between are saying that he is going to have an excellent, excellent combine. And I'm very interested to see what he puts up for his bench press and what he puts up for his 40-yard dash time. I think he's a sneaky athlete. And he's one of those guys, you know, depending on your mock draft, they could have him being anywhere from a late first rounder to like a third round type pro, uh, prospect. I think, you know, Defensive tackle is wide open this year. I think, you know, after Vita Valle, you got Deron Payne, Mo Hurst, Tate. I mean, like, it's still a little bit of a log team. I think if one guy has a dominant combine, he could surpass all the others and be regarded as the number one defensive tackle in this year's draft class. And I think Taven Bryan has the potential out of all the D tackles. I think Deron Payne also will have a fairly interesting combine. Uh, but I'm obviously, I'm hitching my, hitching my wagon to the Florida Gator. Going to number eight, sticking with my Gators, it is Antonio Callaway, the wide receiver from Florida, five foot eleven, two hundred pounds. In 2017, he basically got caught up in a scandal involving like credit card fraud, pretty much, uh, and got kicked off the team. In 2016, though, he had 54 catches, 720 yards, and five touchdowns. Now, I would say in terms of an athlete, he could have a chance at running one of the fastest 40-yard dash times out of all the wide receivers. His hands are really, really good. His route running for a guy that's you know kind of regarded as a burner, if you will is really, really high. He's going to surprise people with his route running, kind of like James Washington out of Oklahoma State did at the Senior Bowl. But he uh, he's so dumb. He's like Randy Gregory levels of stupid. Uh, he would have him on, because he was such a great athlete, he would have him on special teams. And his, his awareness and his football IQ was so low, man. How, I don't know how many times he fair caught the ball with no one around him within, like, the red zone. Like, he, like oh, it would be on the five, he would fair catch it. It, it was, oh, it was so brutal. But in terms of an athletic prospect coming in with all these tags, a great combine can certainly kind of mitigate that. Kind of think of, you know, when Tyreek Hill was coming up. Of course, Tyreek Hill punched like a pregnant girlfriend, had all those red flags, 
But when you're fast, when you're like, a, you know, I don't think even Tyreek went to the combine. If, if he did, we would have known a lot about it. But his pro day and stuff like that. Good testing can overcome pretty much anything. And I think Antonio Callaway, I'm still surprised he got that invite to the combine. Um, and you'll keep an eye out for him during the wide receiver drills. Stick with the wide receivers. Let's be honest, there's a lot of wide receivers on this list. At number seven is DJ Chark from LSU. Six foot four, 200 pounds. Had a massive, massive senior bowl. I think he had like 150, 160 some yards. Um, and in 2017 for LSU, he had 100. Uh, sorry, he had uh, 40 catches for 875 yards and four touchdowns. Now, even back with Odell, Jarvis Landry, Ruben Randall, pretty much any wide receiver ever has never had a big year because LSU's never had a quarterback. Like literally the last LSU wide receiver I think that had a good season receiving was like Dwayne Bow when he had Jamarcus Russell throwing in the ball. Um, but when you look at DJ Chark, there are some people right now that are hinging him running the fastest 40 time for the wide receivers. And if you run the fastest 40 time with six foot four, you're six foot four, you're 200 pounds. Like, I don't think you have to worry about like a Stephen Hill coming out of Georgia Tech where he's a big, long, you know, height, weight, speed type guy. Chark has good hands. We saw it on display in the Senior Bowl. And if he runs something in the four threes, high four threes, ooh, ooh, he could certainly rise up draft boards and be a second round pick. I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's any room for Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton. And then maybe you got like to talk about like Anthony Miller, Christian Kirk, guys like that. Those are all players and wide receivers a lot of people are familiar with. But I, I don't think that any of those guys outside of that group could be a first round wide receiver. That's not the strongest wide receiver class. But I think a guy like DJ Chark, if he runs and tests as well as a lot of people are saying, he could certainly get himself. Right now, I'd say Chark's probably third round, mid mid to late third round, maybe early fourth round conversation. I think if he tests well, like I said, second, he could be he could be a legitimate top 10 pick, top 15 pick in the second round. Going to pick number six, it is Marcus Davenport, the edge rusher from Texas, San Antonio, six foot seven, 255 pounds. In 2017, he had 55 tackles, 17 and a half tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks and three forced fumbles. Now he's a name that a lot of people don't really know about, but they constantly see brought up. You know, he's depending on where you're looking for your draft analysis, or your draft studies. Uh, he's a guy a lot of people think could be in the first round. He, he looked really, really impressive during the Senior Bowl, during the Senior Bowl drills. He was a little inconsistent, but I mean, it's with any small school prospect, you want to compare him to the next Khalil Mack. I don't know if he's going to be that good. If he is, I mean, I might, well, might as well right now start trading for him in rebuilds. But I think a guy like Marcus Davenport, because he's from that small school, you want to see if, you know, at the combine, can he match the hype that he currently has from a lot of scouts and what he brought to the Senior Bowl. So he's definitely a guy from the defensive line, along with Taven Bryan, that I'm really, really keen in on. And I want to see, man. He's just one of those things that not a lot of tape is available from San Antonio and didn't play in a lot of big-time games. So now is the time for him to, you know, introduce himself to the rest of the football world. Going to number five, it's going to be Michael Gallup, wide receiver from Colorado State, six foot one, two hundred pounds. In 2017, he had 100 receptions for 1,400 yards and seven TDs. He's currently my number 10 wide receiver on my wide receiver rankings, and I can see him having a very, very crazy vertical. He, when you watch his tape, he has excellent, excellent jump ball ability. And again, he's one of those guys that you know he could really, really excel in the receiving drills because his hands look really, really good. I remember like last year, uh, Kenny Galladay. No one really, everyone's like, eh. I watched the entire combine, and he was the most impressive player I saw out of the everyone. I watched every position group. I was like, and Tony, um, Kenny Galladay was number one, and he's still, what do you go, third round, fourth round to the Lions, and look what happened, man. He actually looked like a beast for the most part as a rookie, superseding a lot of Lions fans' expectations. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, personally, I like what I can see. I'm not one of these people that look at the box score stats and say, oh, they're going to be good, they're going to be bad. I like what I see. I like what I can see at the Senior Bowl, and I like seeing what I can do and uh, judge from, from the combine drill. So I'm very interested to see what Michael Gallup can do in that and how well he tests could certainly vault him because he has the production. If he can test particularly well, again, another one of those guys, kind of like DJ Chark, a little bit on the outside looking in for the top wide receiver conversation, but could definitely uh, you know, improve his draft stock and get up into that second round. Go number four is going to be Dallas Godert, the tight end from South Dakota State. Six foot five, 255 pounds in 2017. He had 72 catches for 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. Again, another small school, kind of like Marcus Davenport. Not a whole lot of tape on him, but if you ever watch his highlight videos, this guy here is a human highlight machine. His catches are simply ridiculous. He might have the best hands out of any player in this year's draft class, be it any defensive back that thinks crazy, any wide receivers. I think Dallas Goddard might have the craziest hands. His, his body control, his, his patience, his vision, everything ticks the boxes. I just want to see how well he can test. If he could test somewhere in the ballpark of like an OJ Howard type number, 
Good. I'm, I, I, versus I like Mark Andrews. Goodbye. Goodbye. He will be your number one tight end. So he's because for me personally, in my rankings, I have Mark Andrews as a number one tight end. If a guy like Godard can test particularly well, he's just you know the Carson Wentz in me, the guy that just doesn't matter where you come from. If if it looks good, it smells good. It's probably gonna taste good. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I kind of feel like with Dallas Godard. No homo. Going to number three, it's going to be Shaquem Griffin, the outside linebacker from UCF, 6'1", 225 pounds. Yes, he's the guy that's missing a limb and originally didn't even get a combine invite, which is utterly disgusting. I tweeted my my disapproval on that on Twitter. Uh, in 2017, but listen, this guy here didn't get a combine invite clearly because he has missing half an arm. Uh, 2017, 74 tackles, 13 and a half tackles for loss, 7 sacks, was part of the undefeated UCF Knights. In 2016, 92 tackles, 20 tackles for loss, and 11 and a half sacks. This guy here is an NFL player. That is NFL production. And I think, even think, worst case, with his limitations, if Jason Pierre-Paul can still play, can still get paid big-time money, Shaquem Griffin can make an NFL roster. I think, you know, definitely will probably have to start his way as a special teamer and work his way up, but he could be a role player right away. So I definitely think... You know, I'm just pulling for him, man. He's definitely the feel-good story. And the production, it's just one of those things, personally, the production and the fact that he's getting, still getting disrespected with that production, uh, it, it, it was kind of shocking to me. So I, I really hope that he goes out and absolutely dominates the combine. I mean, athletically speaking, I don't know how well he's going to test. I don't know if he's going to shock the world and with his 40 time or his agility drills or his jumping or anything like that. But he's definitely a guy that belongs on an NFL roster come next September, or this coming September. Go to number two, it's going to be Arden Key, the edge rusher from LSU, 6'6", 265 pounds. In 2017, uh, I think he's batting a little bit of injury, bulked up a little bit, so he lacked uh, explosiveness. He still had 33 tackles for five and a half tackles for loss and four sacks. But all, all you have to do is look at his 2016 season where he had 55 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, and 11 sacks. He was, you know, coming into this year, he looked like a, a 100% top 10 pick. Now he doesn't even show up on a lot of people's first round mock drafts. Uh, I, I mean, really, the tape didn't look particularly well this year. I mean, LSU in general didn't play good, but I think a good combine will remind everyone. Like, think back to Jadavion Clowney. Jadavion Clowney in his, uh, would have been sophomore season, was utterly dominant. But then his junior year, his stats kind of dropped, and people kind of questioned it. And then he went out and massacred the combine, and we all saw what happened, you know, sh sh happily ever after for the D Houston Texans. So I think Arden Key, I don't know if his draft stock could shoot up, kind of like he's not in the Jadavion Clowney territory, but I think if he tests particularly well at the Combine, he could definitely welcome himself back into the first round conversation. And number one, it is going to be Auden Tate, the wide receiver from Florida State. 6'5", 225 pounds. In 2017, he had 40 catches for 550 yards and 10 touchdowns. Him, it's all about the 40 time. He is looks every bit of the next Kelvin Bendred, Devin Funches, a.k.a. prototypical Carolina Panther wide receiver. And speaking of, Carolina probably does need to look at bringing a wide receiver. But he, out of maybe any player, Cortland Sutton kind of, but I think if you look at the wide receiver, and obviously when you talk about combine, the biggest area is people want to see what your speed is, even though you know, you're know you not really in pads, it's not functional football speed. But you know you still want to see a, a nice 40-yard dash time. So Auden Tate is one of those guys, if he runs like a 4-6, something like a tight end, because he, he kind of is built like a tight end, he's like, yeah, he is what we thought he is, and he'll probably go in the second round, maybe third round, he might slip there. But if he has a good 40 time, runs in the 4-4s, I don't, like I said, the speed doesn't... I, I think he's going to be like a high 4.5, low 4.6 type guy. If he can somehow run the low 4.4s, four I mean, you now have a guy that could very well go in the first round and surplant a lot of guys for the top wide receiver. So he's definitely from the wide receiver group, which we talked about a couple of them, along with, I would say, DJ Chark, um, the one you want to watch. So there you go, guys. Those are the top 10 players, in my opinion, that you should keep an eye on for and watch at the combine if there's anyone that i missed or anyone that you in particular really want to watch let me know in the comment section below as always if it's your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button this is the best spot on youtube's to find your draft content until next time guys it's c4 saying peace out